DK contributor Matt Meiselman, Rotowire's Nick Whalen. They're here for a look around the association before we get out of here. Busy 10 game slate tonight, fellas. It's all about DFS here, so let's dive a little deep into it. Matt, we need a guard priced over 7,000 bucks tonight. Who do you like? So there's one team in particular tonight that has a couple guys missing, and I think a lot of the field is going to go to the cheaper players on the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, D'Anthony De Melton's out, Dylan Brooks is out. Um, and it's not that I don't like those guys, but for a pay-up guard, I think John Morant probably goes overlooked. Um, there's some big names on this slate. Giannis is playing Durant and Harden, at least as of now. Who knows what kind of news we're going to get. Um, but I think Morant goes overlooked in large part because the Grizzlies are 10-point underdogs in Utah against the Jazz. Kind of a tough spot, but the upside's there. And Morant's last two games haven't been great, but it's entirely because the Grizzlies won in blowouts. Uh, they beat the Rockets. They actually beat the Clippers in a game where Morant didn't play down the stretch either. So... If the Grizzlies do keep it close, I think the upside for Morant is definitely there, and he could wind up being the highest scoring player tonight. Yeah, it could certainly be at least mid-40s for him anyway. What do you think, Nick? Yeah, I think Matt's on the right track as far as targeting that game. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll highlight a few other guards that I like in this range. I think if you want to go just over 7K, uh, Tyrese Baxey at 7,400 is a player that I like tonight. He's still playing a ton of minutes for that team, 35 to 40 minutes virtually every night, it seems, for Tyrese Baxey coming off of a 50 DraftKings point game uh, against Portland on Sunday. I mean, I'm not going to steer you away from James Harden at Cleveland. Uh, 11,600 is the tag for him. So you're paying up, but he's starting to look more like the James Harden uh, we've been accustomed to seeing for the last seven or eight years. Uh, and then I, I think LaMelo Ball, you know, another pay up option at Washington tonight. He's at 10,200. 60 to 70 DraftKings point upside pretty much every time he takes the floor at this point. Obviously, he's not going to hit those numbers every time, but... Uh, what he's doing as a scorer, a rebounder, an assister, uh, he has multiple mm -hmm. steals, even in five of his last six games. He's been really, really good. Just because I like to play, too. Anthony Edwards in a real good spot tonight. Guys, value yeah. guard, uh, someone under 4,500. I mean, Nick, I'm looking here. Patty Mills, Bogdan Bogdanovich, Kevin Herter, campaign. Mm -hmm. Who do you like? Well, Herter's one of the guys on my list. I think 4,200 remains a pretty good deal. Uh, for a guy who is kind of the obvious villain with DeAndre Hunter out long term. And, and obviously Atlanta has other options. They're so deep. Uh, but he's played 32 and 34 minutes in his first two games, filling in for Hunter. Uh, again, at 4,200, I think you're still getting a steal uh, on his potential upside. And then going back to that Memphis-Utah game, yeah, this isn't a great matchup for the Grizzlies, especially if they're shorthanded without two key pieces in Brooks and Melton. But that could pave the way for a guy like Tyus Jones, who's down at 3,400 uh, to see a few more minutes in this game. And he's already put up 23 and 26 DraftKings points, respectively, over his last two games, despite those guys being in the lineup and despite Jones playing fewer than 20 minutes in each of those games. So even if you tack on, you know, four, five, six more minutes for Jones, um, you know, that could pay dividends. Matt, who stands out to you? So Nick mentioned Tyrese Maxey already, and that's a game where we actually do have some injury news we're waiting on. It's the one at this point, I think, with relevant uh, mm -hmm. uncertain news with Tobias Harris still being questionable. So if he's out, um, Firkin Korkmaz is guard and forward eligible, but he's only 3,900. Um, and we see we saw Korkmaz actually do really well for a long stretch of games while Harris was out. and bead has been out. Obviously, Ben Simmons hasn't been playing. Um, Matisse Thibel is back, but this is his first game back. I think he was out with COVID, so... He's likely on a minutes restriction. I think if Harris doesn't play, Korkma is almost certainly starts, and that's way too low of a price tag for him. Uh, we'll just have to kind of wait and see what happens with the Sixers later tonight. They're in Sacramento. That is a very late game. Let's go with the same parameters here, but uh, at forward, Matt, we'll start with you. Someone north of 7K. So this will be a quicker answer because I just kind of gave the situation already, but Harris himself, if he does play, I think mm. that the questionable tag will scare people off if it carries past lock. And with Embiid still out, Harris is 8,100. The matchup couldn't be much better. They're playing a Sacramento Kings team that isn't good defensively and plays at a high pace. So if Harris does end up on the floor, I think he could be a really strong play that probably doesn't get a ton of ownership. Nick, what do you think? Yeah, I like that call uh, with the injury tag on Harris. You know, if he does play, I think that does scare some people away. I think we could see something similar, too, uh, with Jalen Brown. You know, he'll likely be back in the lineup tonight. Um, I think a lot of people might be a little skittish staying away from him with that hamstring injury, uh, but I think he's in a pretty good spot. I mean, his teammate Jason Tatum has looked a lot better lately. Uh, he's down at, or he's up at $10,100. Obviously, Brown coming back maybe complicates things for Jason Tatum, but three straight 30 plus point games uh, heading into tonight. He started to look more like the scorer uh, we've been used to seeing over the last couple of years. 
I like DeMar DeRozan, 9,100 at Indiana. I think it's a pretty safe play. Uh, I like Chris Middleton as well at 7,800. This will now be his fourth game back uh, from COVID protocols. They've, they've kind of had some training wheels on him these first three games. But, I mean, when he's healthy and he's right, he's such a high floor option that I always love to play him. I think what really stands out here is uh, we'll, we'll stay with you here, Nick. We'll go back to value forwards under $4,500. Is It's not a stud night. It's, it's really all no. about value tonight. Yeah, yeah, it, it really is. And there are so many options with 10 games on the slate. You know, I mentioned Kevin Herter as a guard. He's also forward eligible on DraftKings. So, you know, if you want to fit him in there, you can certainly do that. Uh, returning once again to that Utah-Memphis game, Kyle Anderson at 4,400 is intriguing with no Brooks and no Melton. Uh, of course, though, tough matchup against Utah, so you do have to weigh that. On the other side of that one, I, I do like Royce O'Neal as kind of the high floor, you know, obviously a low ceiling option, but $4,200 uh, that's about what you expect. Memphis, of course, worst defensive team in the league heading into tonight. They gave up a ton of wide open threes. Opponents are shooting 40.2% from three on the season uh, against the Memphis Grizzlies. That is by far the worst mark in the league. And, and Royce O'Neal, you know, kind of that, that quintessential three and D player who could take advantage of that. Uh, and the one other player I'll highlight quickly, Danilo Gallinari, 4,000 going up against OKC. Pretty deep discount here, uh, I feel like, for a guy who's, who's on the short list of players benefiting from that absence of DeAndre Hunter. He went for 35 DraftKings points Saturday against Charlotte. Uh, kind of a boomer bust guy, uh, but, but if you're looking for someone in that category, I, I do like Gallinari down at 4,000. Matt, you've got about 20 seconds. Who do you like? All right, Nick's mentioned a couple Hawks guys. I'll add Cam Reddish to the mix, especially if mm -hmm. Bogdan Bogdanovich doesn't play. Um, there could be some extra Hawks value. Just quickly, the, the Nets uh, are still missing Joe Harris, and Bruce Brown is injured now, too. So DeAndre Bembry, probably the mm -hmm. chalk value play forward. He's very cheap at 3,100, but uh, I think that makes a lot of sense, too, if he starts.